swear I start to film a video and then every time I find a piece of hair <laughs> that's dangling right in my face. Hey guys, it's Bren and I am excited to be back filming another video for you. Uh, I apologize that it's been very... I'm in a swivel chair so I feel like I'm constantly not centered. Sorry. My life has been uh, quite hectic lately. If you saw my last video, you'll kind of know what's going on um, and I do plan to film like an updated type of video for you. But I did ask you guys in the community tab, which I can post in now, if you didn't know, make sure to check that out. It's like the little uh, tab that says community on my channel and it's basically where I can like make posts and polls and different stuff and talk to you guys directly on YouTube, which is cool. I didn't have that capability before, and now I do. So, things are exciting. We're moving up in the world. <laughs> but anyway, I asked you guys on there if you wanted me to keep uploading, like, the normal videos that I'd kind of pre-scheduled or, like, that I'd intended to film and upload, um, or if you only wanted really updates on my current situation because I didn't want to just, like, film this video and post it and confuse everyone and be like, okay, she told us that she was having this difficult situation and now she's just, you know, filming normal videos like everything is fine. I'm still dealing with that. It's not over. Um, and I do plan to film, like, an update for you, but most of you did say just to go ahead and film what I wanted to film. Um, and I have been wanting to film this video for a long time. It's very long overdue. So, here we are. I'm actually in one of, like, the highest spirits that I've been in in a while today. Um, I got a haircut yesterday, so I'm feeling fresh. Um, that's why my hair looks better than it normally does. <laughs> um, and it's like 50 some degrees outside. It's sunny. Once I film this video, I'm gonna go take a walk. So overall, like today, I'm just in much better spirits than I have been in the past couple of weeks. So I figured this was kind of a good time to sit down and film this video because I've been prepared to film it for a while. Um, I've had like all my stuff right now prepared, just like ready to go, um, but haven't actually like taking the time to sit down and do something like just for me in you know a couple weeks so this feels a little weird when your personal life kind of explodes <laughs> and then you still have to like do work and do other things that like you would normally be doing um and you have to kind of like pretend that's not happening it's very hard for me to like compartmentalize this and kind of like push all that personal stuff aside and like continue to live like my normal life outside of what's happening at home um but we're we're working on it we're gonna do it um and i feel like focusing on this stuff is going to be more helpful to me than like to continue to just talk to you guys about what's the situation that's currently happening i just like i need distraction sometimes you know like i think about that stuff enough i need to think about other things sometimes um so today we're thinking about books. <laughs> As you know, I love talking about books. I love filming these videos because I like to just update you on the things that I'm enjoying. Um, and I do update this on my blog every month. I talk about everything that I read and watched and listened to and enjoyed and all that sort of stuff every single month on my blog. Um, so none of these are new. Um, if you follow me on my blog, you will have seen all of these before. If you follow me on Goodreads, you're keeping up with what I'm reading on a day to day. I haven't been reading in a while, but that's another issue. <laughs> and actually a lot of these books I read at the end of 2018, so we're a little behind. It was kind of hard for me to go back and like think about things that I read in like September, November to be able to talk to you about them. Um, I had to go back and kind of refresh my memory, but we're here, we're talking about them. I didn't want to skip it because I do love these videos and I know there are a handful of you, um, not a ton of you, but a handful of you that really do enjoy these videos, so I didn't want to skip it. I've been talking for five minutes, let's just move forward. <laughs> so I do these review videos a little bit differently every time, um, but I realize that sometimes I forget to just like tell you what the book is about, like I just jump into my thoughts on it and I don't stop to be like, hey, this is what this book is actually about, in case you haven't heard of it or you don't know. It seems obvious, but apparently my head just skips over the obvious. So what I tried to do is just give you like a quick one sentence summary because I never know how to summarize books. Like I could just read you the back cover, I could try and like detail it myself, um, but instead I just did like a quick one sentence summary and I'm gonna jump into my thoughts after that. Oh my god. <laughs> so the first book, I read this at the end of 2019, um, is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. To describe it in one sentence, uh, it's about a girl, her name is April, and one day she stumbles upon this giant sculpture in New York City. 
she films a video, she posts it to YouTube, and suddenly she finds herself in the midst of fame that she is not quite equipped to handle. This was one of my most highly anticipated books of 2018. I was super excited about this. Um, if you watch just my normal book review videos, or if you've just been watching me for a while in general, you know that I love John Green books. You know that I watch Vlogbrothers videos all the time. I'm a big fan. Uh, so obviously I was excited to read this. <laughs> but I do want to say, um, this book was nothing like I expected. If you come into this expecting essentially a John Green book, but written by his brother, that is not what you're gonna get. <laughs> and in retrospect, like, of course the writing style is gonna be different. Of course the story is gonna be different. Of course their interests are different. So what they write about is going to be different. Like, I don't know why I expected them to be so similar. Um, but one thing that I love about both of them, um, they both do this really well and it comes through in both of their books. So if you like this about John Green books, you'll like this about this book. They have this unique ability that I don't find in many people where they can take something like so small, so insignificant and make it into this like big and meaningful metaphor about life and it just blows me away every time. Like if you haven't seen their um, broccoli tree video, I highly recommend it blew me away. I watch it frequently. It makes me cry 80% of the time. <laughs> but if you're anything like me, which is to say if you're a 20 something year old who feels like somewhere in the middle between a teenager and like a full fledged adult, not quite either one, which means you grew up in the social media generation, but you don't necessarily feel consumed by it and you're kind of expected to like live in both worlds simultaneously. If you relate to that at all, if that made sense, then I think you'll appreciate this book. <laughs> it's just one of those things that immediately I felt super connected to because I understood the main character in a way that I don't always relate to main characters. Just because I don't feel like there are many books out there about 20 something year olds that are just like navigating how weird the world is. <laughs> and also, I just, I don't think I've ever read a book that talks about growing up in this social media driven world where things are equally like confusing and difficult, but also full of possibility. And then also like super depressing at times. <laughs> anyway, all of that's to say, I love this book immensely. Um, it's not like anything that I've read ever. And it's something that I would recommend to like every young adult I know, just because I feel like everyone could find something to relate to in this book. All right, next is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adai, Adai, Adaiemi. I swear every time I film one of these videos, there's a name that I can't pronounce, if not multiple names I can't pronounce, and I realize once I start filming, like, why didn't I Google that? I feel terrible. Anyway, this is about a country called either Orisha or Orisha that used to have magic until the monarchy just like killed everybody off that possessed any sort of magical power, like just killed off magic entirely, or so they thought. And so now a girl named Zelly, 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 I'm terrible with this, <laughs> sets up on a mission to bring it back. And let's just say, it's not easy. It's never easy. A book this big, it's not easy. <laughs> so this is one of those books that I like kept hearing great things about. And I wanted to read it, I bought it because I knew I wanted to read it, and yet it sat on my shelf for a long time because I just didn't know if I would like it. <laughs> and I think just the fact of it being like 600 pages in a debut novel like scared me a little bit because just personally like when I delve into a book series, especially if it's like a hefty one, um, I like there to be at least two or three books out just in case I really love it. I want to know that I'm like can really be consumed by it, if you know what I mean. But I ended up reading this because it was calling to me on the shelf. Um, I was in the mood for it, so I decided to just go ahead. I'm gonna read it. And I will say it does start off a little slow, which is frustrating when you look at like the fact that this is a debut novel. It's the first book in a series. Um, it's so hefty <laughs> for something like that. So it is frustrating when like you feel like it could be shorter than it is. Um, so I was frustrated that it started off a little slow, but I'd say about halfway through, I got so sucked into it and I was just like pulled in until the very last page. <laughs> so I will say this book requires a little bit of patience, um, but I promise it's worth it. It's an amazing book. Um, I don't fault it for its slow start. <laughs> and also like the main character is just one of 
my favorite characters that I've read in a while. I just love like strong, emotional, imperfect female protagonists. Those are the types of characters that I always like feel super connected to, so when a book has that, it's extra points from the get-go for me. And honestly, I'm just excited to like see where this series goes. And you know, this was, I think last year, last year a Goodreads award winner. Um, so I'm not the only one that feels that way. So if you don't want to take my word for it, <laughs> go read all those reviews. <laughs> all right, this is something a little different for me. Um, this is called The King is Always Above the People by Daniel Alarcon. It's been a while since I took Spanish. I don't really have a summary for this because it is a collection of short stories, so there's not like an overarching plot line by any means. And, and this is one of those cases where I heard a couple people talking about this book and I thought, you know, I'm always looking for something different to read, something out of my comfort zone. Like, I tend to stay pretty up to date on like young adult releases and young adult like fantasy, sci-fi type of releases, but, and sometimes like regular fiction, but when it comes to like nonfiction or short stories or things that just like I don't normally pick up, um, I go pretty much based on recommendation alone, just to try and read different things every so often and like a lot of times it ends up just being like not really for me like you know this isn't normally the thing I would read so it's not my favorite thing rarely but it happens I just find like a diamond in the rough so I keep doing it because I think you know it can happen I could find something amazing that I never would have picked up I wouldn't call this one a diamond but I did enjoy it so just to say straight off I wouldn't really consider myself like super knowledgeable on what makes a good short story like I pretty much base something like this on the same level that I would any other book, which is just like on a scale of 1 to 10, how much did I enjoy it? That English degree I have up there really comes in handy, doesn't it? <laughs> but like at the same time, these were well written, the stories were good. My only hang up is that I'm not sure these stories were for me. And by that I mean like... Short story collections tend to have some sort of thread, right? Like they don't all have a beginning to end plot line, obviously, like a novel, but they do have some sort of common theme running between them in order to make it a collection. So for this one, I would say that thread is like young men going through some sort of like economic or personal struggle, feeling unsure of themselves and feeling unsure of their futures. So like while I can appreciate stories like that, you know, it's not something that necessarily pulls me in and you know, that I feel super connected to, which is really the only thing that I'm ever looking for from a book. <laughs> so I did find it interesting. Um, if themes like that are of interest to you, I would definitely recommend it. Like I do think these are good stories, they're well written, like it's a good book. And there were a few like gem stories in here that I really did appreciate. I mean the writing style was good, so like I really have nothing bad to say about it other than like I just, I didn't connect to it, but that's not like the book's fault. <laughs> it's just like I don't think I'm its target audience, I guess, is where I'm getting at. Alright, now for something a little more up my normal alley. Um, this is The Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Dark Artifices series. Yes, that's what it's called. I believed I talked about when I read like Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows. Um, I've been reading these Shadowhunter books since high school, I want to say. I'm trying to think of how I can give a summary of this book without just giving the whole story away, because it is the third in a trilogy. So I'll say that after the end of the last book, um, the clave is still on the brink of like a civil war. <laughs> so Julian and Emma, our favorite two people, go off to try and find the black volume of the dead to save the shadow hunters. Um, and also there's a point like in the middle of the book, I don't think this is a spoiler, uh, but they go into like a parallel universe. So cool so different. All the while, of course, they're still dealing with this uh, forbidden romance parabatai bond thing. And to those of you that have not read any Shadowhunters books, I realized that half of those words meant nothing to you, and I apologize. <laughs> so like I said, I've been reading these books since high school. Um, I'm a big fan of them. Like, I wouldn't say they're amazing, like they're the best, most well-written books ever, but I am a big fan of like the world that Cassandra Clare has created with all of these series. And it is just easy, like once you're kind of into that, like once you kind of have read books and gotten into the whole world, it's really easy just to like read all the different stories. And this trilogy in particular is the most 
modern day version of that. So I do feel like I can go out on a limb and say that this series has been my favorite so far. I don't want to give a ton of information, like I'm struggling with what to say without giving spoilers, not only to this series, but like any of her series, because I just don't know what you've read and what you haven't. But I will just say the main protagonist of this one, again, is an amazing female character. Emma Carceres has just been like, by and large, one of my favorite female protagonists that I've read in a long time. She's a badass, she's witty, she's sarcastic, and I feel like I would have said she was my favorite before I read Red Queen, um, but we're not talking about that in this video, so just pretend I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> I digress. I do feel like if you have not read any of Cassandra Clare's books yet, I wouldn't start with this one. Um, I do think her first series, City of Bones, was probably the best introduction to the world that you're gonna get. I do feel like that particular series kind of jumps the shark about halfway through, but I do feel like it gives you the best introduction because if you try to jump into one of these other series, I feel like you're not gonna get the best experience. But that being said, all of her books are like jam-packed with like action, adventure. There are some lulls just because she likes to like jump back and forth to different characters and sometimes you're with a character that's not necessarily your favorite, which is kind of, it always happens with books that juggle characters. But if you like these types of fantasy books that take place in like a different world and you really love like really, really, really slow burn romances, <laughs> You will love Cassandra Clare books. I'll just say that. All right, and lastly, I have If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. And to summarize this book, girl and boy don't fit in at school. Girl and boy lock eyes, instantly fall in love. Um, but because she's white and he's black, things aren't so easy, as you can imagine. So I've never heard of this book. I would not have picked it up on my own, but I read it because I'm a part of this Life's Library book club. And I like to just see what book clubs are reading just frequently if I'm ever looking for something different. Again, because I'm always looking just for something out of my comfort zone or something that I wouldn't normally hear about. I think what's amazing about this book in particular is it was written in 1988. But like the issues that this book talks about, like love at first sight, racism, being a teenager, like all of it just feels so incredibly modern. Like if I didn't know that this was written in 1988, like I would have thought this was written last year. Like, it feels so incredibly modern, it's kind of insane. And because it's so short, like, it's such a great book just to, like, read in an afternoon, or if you have a day where you just want to kind of get through a book, um, this is a great option for that, especially if you love, like, YA romances. If you're a fan of YA romances, or if you're not, I think you'll go and read the summary of this book and be like, this sounds like every other YA romance that I've ever read ever. Like, what makes this one so different? Like, okay, two people fall in love at first sight, like, big whoop, where's the drama? Do you know that, like, this is actually one of the first, if not the first, like, YA romance? Like, this kind of defined what the modern day YA romance looks like. So that's why, like, it feels modern, but it also doesn't feel unique necessarily. Um, but once you kind of know that background information, I think, it makes this book seem even cooler. <laughs> and I liked this book for the same reason that I do enjoy reading like short stories and stuff because you really get a full picture from beginning to end in a quick amount of time. And while it's not like, you know, a big sprawling fantasy book where you have 700 pages to dive into a world and into its characters or whatever, like you have a very short amount of time to get into it. and. So when you do, it's like, this book is amazing, right? Like how in, what is this, like less than 200 pages can I care so much about a couple of teenagers? And I don't want to talk too much about it or give like too much away or talk too much about like the mechanics of it and stuff just because I think this is one of those books that's best just gone into with more of a clean slate. Um, I do think kind of that background information is important, but I don't want to like tell you what happens in the middle or the end because I think that just <laughs> it ruins the experience. Um, although I will say I do think this is one of those books that I would go back and reread if I had just like a free afternoon. Um, just because I feel like there was a lot of stuff I missed or I glossed over because I was just reading through it so quickly and I didn't take the time to appreciate like all of the plot devices and foreshadowing and different stuff like that that this book is full of. <laughs> so like, no, this isn't the most suspenseful, surprising, 
out of this world mind-blowing book but it is like just really nice in its quaint small short nature sometimes i talk and i'm like what am i even saying <laughs> all right so that's gonna be it for today's video do let me know if i know there's not many of you that watch these videos but those of you who do what kind of reviews do you like mainly because i feel like i do it a little bit differently every time i film these just based on how i feel when i film them but i'm curious like do you like short summaries do you not want summaries do you want like me to go into detail on what the books are about or do you like me to spend more time talking about my thoughts and also like do you want me just to talk about kind of what I liked about it or do you want me to go deeper into like how it made me feel or like what it made me think about or different things like does that make sense? I just feel like there's so many ways to do book reviews and I'm curious like what's your favorite part when you're watching book reviews what are you watching for what's the kind of thing that makes you decide or helps you decide whether or not something is what you'd want to read or not I guess is what I'm asking so yeah if you're a frequent watcher of these videos um, do let me know in the comments because I want to hear from you because you're one of the few people that are subscribed to me that actually watch these videos so please give me your thoughts all right I'm gonna go get back to my regular life now thanks so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another video bye